What you are about to hear is real. Nightwatch, the actual on-the-scene report of your police force in action. There are no actors, there is no script. Every voice, every sound is authentic. The investigations are recorded as they actually occur. Nightwatch, presented with the cooperation of the Police Department of Culver City, California, W.N. Hildebrand, Chief. And now we switch you to Detective Unit 5-6, on patrol somewhere in the field, and to the official police recorder, Don Reed. Answering a call of a woman attempting suicide. Respirator truck just ahead. Stopped. We're swinging in behind. Two firemen with a portable inhaler hustling into the house. Ambulance has been dispatched. Should be here any moment. bedroom. Fireman setting up their equipment on the bed. Middle-aged woman appears to be asleep. Okay. There's a couple of bottles here. More sleeping tablets. Let's look around and see what you can find. See how they... Fireman applying oxygen mask. She looks more like she's in a kind of a coma. coma. Young fellow standing at the doorway. His picture here in the dresser. Probably her son. Let's move over there. Would you want to contact the family doctor? We tried to. I can't get a hold of it. I called him first. Well, just relax the best you can. We've uh, got an ambulance on the way. What is that prick? Is it the fourth breathing that's making the noise? Yeah. She's just... That's not... Uh, it's not forcing it in. In other words, she's just absorbing it. She's breathing herself. herself. She's breathing herself. Yeah, you couldn't force it in her any of well, this is just making it easier for her to breathe That's pretty steadily. Mm-hmm. How's her pulse? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Apparently she took these about 4 o'clock this afternoon. It's a little deep one. In the distance, the ambulance. to the front door. Sergeant Waller talking with the young fellow. If we need anything else for our form, we'll, we'll check with you again later. As long as you're still, still light there, they have a chance of pumping her stomach and uh, getting that out of her system. So we'll just hope for the best. Ambulance crew coming in. Here's we've been able to find out it's sleeping tablets. Moving in a stretcher. Removing the oxygen mask. Placing the victim on the stretcher. Feel the patient outside now. 
Across the sidewalk, quickly out to the ambulance. Resuscitator truck on the left. Still grinding away. Into the ambulance. Her son uh, is going to follow you down in his car. He'll, he'll meet, meet her down there at the hospital. Okay. Okay, man. Thank you. son was there, but I found this note on her desk. Most women want to take their lives because of some man. With me, it's just the opposite. I don't want to live because I have no man. Hmm. Now let's get back to work. Six to one, clear on the attempt suicide. Victim en route to the hospital. One five six ten four. Take this call. One zero three eight Main Street. Ten thirty eight Main Street in the bar. Investigate a man possibly carrying a gun. You have five three is rolling on this call now. Uh, five six Roger. at the location. Man possibly carrying a gun. Combination bar and restaurant. Uniformed officer at the door of the bar motioning us in. Inside, looking for subject reportedly possibly carrying a gun, flashing a large amount of money. Well, the gentleman we're looking for is standing in the middle of the dance floor. You can't miss him. Tall cowboy hat, suit, boots, and a silver two-gun holster. One arm around the girl, the other waving a fistful of money. There's so much noise you can't hear yourself think. Taking a little encouragement and assist by one arm to get the subject headed for the door. Taking a good look at those guns, they're just a couple of water pistols. It's harmless enough. That is, if you wouldn't mind an occasional shower. Well, let's move on outside. Sergeant Tommy Dirks, Uniform Division, joining us. Cowboy leaning against a car, spinning a water pistol on one finger, waving a wad of bills. What would you guys get mad at me for? We got a, we got a report that you were carrying a weapon in large sums oh, of money. I got about $150 on my pocket. And I'm the, I'm the nicest guy. Just call up and ask him. I'm the nicest guy you ever met. Do you, do you have some uh, identification on you? Sure I do, sir. Uh, what, do you, what do you mean getting mad at me? Oh, we're not mad at you. We're trying you, to safeguard all the money you're carrying. You mean, oh, you mean old Fontaine you stole my golf clubs and all my motor boats? I, you know me well. I know you too. I'm the man that owns a big market. What's the, the name of the market? Uh, hmm. Look, let's quit joking. I'm a big uh, man. And you guys are getting mad at me. You, <laughs> you ain't got good sense. Do we look like we're <clears throat> mad at you? You are okay, carrying. Okay, go ahead. You are carrying an unusual amount of money. That's my benefit because I just got the thing and I still got the money. And it ain't none of your business. Oh, it isn't? Hey, you want I, it to make it our business? Look, how much money do you want? You want it to make it our business or do you want to cooperate with us? Make I, up your mind I one way or another. I wish you'd let me go home. We're not going to stand out here I and argue with you all night. You're going to go home to wife. Sure, yeah, we'll let you go home. I'm a you nice give us a few man. correct answers here and we'll let you go home. Well, count it, count it. We don't want your money. We're trying to safeguard your money. You're flashing money around in a local bar. A lot of money that people don't see ordinarily. If you walk out of this bar and lose all that money, you're going to blame the local police for not doing anything about it. Not me. You'll be the first one to squawk. Do you have a phone number of anyone who could identify I'll show you one from the big man downtown, the biggest man you ever saw. Give me, give me a little light, will you, please? Okay. It's good. Hey, Tom, Tom, me around. Tom, 
This guy is a walking bank of America. Sure he is. Ten dollar fine. The only one thing you can do is arrest me for a plain drunk. No, we don't want to arrest you, but we'll have to if you keep that up. Well, you, that's all you can do for it. I ain't driving. I ain't going no place. Just plain drunk. That's $25. I'm just a plain drunk, and that's all you can do about it. You can't dress me for anything but a train bunk under no condition. And you're going to be surprised when you lock me up. Everybody's going to laugh at you. Look, until you I, prove Let's go in here and have a cup of drinks, all of us. And we don't want you to have any more to drink. We want you to go get some coffee. Why? Will you do that? Let's go in here. Will you go get some coffee? I shall sit down right there for two hours and wait till you come and say go home. I'm a junk. That's one thing you can believe. Well, suppose you go right in there and sit down and have some coffee. I don't like that coffee, but I'll go sit down. Okay, let's, go get get some, let's go get something to drink and sit down. What do you say? You go get some coffee over there. Can you get no drink? Hey, come on. We'll we'll coffee before we have to... Yeah, it's booking be too bad if we had to book such a friendly fellow. Cowboy wobbling on high heel boots toward the restaurant. Whoops. <laughs> He's making a right turn into the bar again. Well, he just developed himself a problem. Yeah, I'll go and get some coffee, no, huh? Stay here. He said I can no, go and get him no, caught. You didn't go quick enough. Wait a minute. Hello. He told me to go in and get oh, some coffee. Now, you coffee. wait a minute now. We're going to have to take you to jail. I'm going in here. I'm going to give you some coffee and you everything. You go with these officers. Be Why? Be with us, mister. I don't You're think I should. Well, I think you should. Don't give me a jail sentence. Please don't do that. Let, let me... Let me... Uh, be a gentleman and be a nice fellow. You come with us. Suspect being placed in the, in the uniform car. Yeah, he'll be all right. Bail out in five hours. How did you get all over your coat? You know that water pistol he was spinning? Yeah. He was a better shot than I give him credit for. <laughs> five six clear. Uh, five three has a suspect in custody. One five six ten four. Five six. We were to the station. Special investigation. Uh, five six Roger. Be in in about ten minutes. You are listening to Night Watch and following the activities of Detective Unit 5-6 on its tour of duty. Remember, the people and sounds you are hearing are real and the investigations are recorded in the field as they actually occur. We'll bring you the final results of tonight's action at the conclusion of Night Watch. The answer to peril should not be panic. You can help constructively to minimize the danger of a surprise air attack if you are able to volunteer a few hours each week as a ground observer. Ground observers compensate for radar's blind spots. Help make America's defense complete. And now we take you to headquarters and to the official police recorder, Don Reed. Do you want to see us out? Uh, yeah, Ron, our uh, juvenile officers just picked up a couple little kids. The neighbors were complaining. I uh, rode down with a J, and that place was filthy. Mother would take off days and half the nights neglecting them. Here's a name and address. Oh, yeah, I know this case. We found these kids abandoned in a car one night. Mother was in a bar. Remember, Don? Yeah, I remember. The kids were about half frozen. I want a record check on the mother. And the, Don, how about you going in the J Bureau there and tell them I'll be in a few minutes? Yeah, we'll do. Moving into the Juvenile Bureau now. Policewoman Pinkston in the corner with a tiny baby. Juvenile officer talking to the older boy, about four years old. Blonde, thin. She isn't walking, and she isn't calling. Yes, she is, Leslie. Ask my mama what, how old she is. All right, baby. Do you remember one night about, oh, four weeks ago, you and your little baby sister were left in an auto down here on front of a bar? Oh, yeah. Remember it was a cold, foggy night, and you were inside there by yourself? Do you remember that? 
and put a blanket over your little baby sister and went in and got your mommy? Remember that? Yeah. This is kind of a disappointment, you know. She said she'd take better care of you after that, but apparently she isn't going to do it, is she? Hmm? Well, I have to take care of my baby sister, t too. You mean during the day you take care of your baby sister? How old are you? Four. You're four? Mm -hmm. What would you do if suddenly the house caught fire? Hmm? I would get the, the baby out of the house and... I have to go down there and push the button and tell them where to go. You'd go down and ring the fire alarm? Yeah, and tell them where to go. And what if during the day your little baby and your little baby sister started choking or something? Then what would you do? I'd tell my mommy. You'd tell your mommy? I think by the time you got around to your mommy, your little baby sister wouldn't be choking anymore. Mm -mm. What did you have for breakfast this morning? Eggs. Eggs? How many? Two? Do you fix it all by yourself? And what about your little baby sister? She has milk and she has baby food. Do you fix it for her? I took milk for her and baby food for her, yes. This little kid was asleep out on the lawn. When that was one? Down there. No, the youngster was. We asked him if he'd get in the house and he said no. But now I do funny tricks with my baby sister. She laughs all the time. What kind of funny tricks do you do? I do. Does she laugh? Yeah. Watch right this. Maybe I tell her she laughs and I do it. This is the most adorable little baby. Sergeant Perkins coming in. I think you're in a record check on the mother. She's never been arrested. But the only thing on the record is that night that we warned her about the kids. And what exactly happened? We received this telephone call from, whoops, baby, from a lady who, like all good citizens, did not care to give her name or to get involved in anything. She told me about these two little youngsters living at a man that she knows that we have known in the past because of his drunken habits. So, she knows there's a baby in there because she hears it cry, but she's never seen the kid outside. So I said, okay, we'll see about it. We, uh... Come up to the house, and this youngster is lying on the ground asleep, and he had been asleep for quite some time because of the impressions left by the grass in his arms and on his body, and his little fanny was sticking out of his jeans, though he has on now. And uh, we asked him why he didn't go in the house and go to sleep, and uh, he couldn't get in. So at that time, we ring the doorbell a couple of times, and we hear the baby crying, and then we this uh, man comes to the door. And uh, we tell him who we are, and we walk in, and uh, this baby is crying in the middle of the floor on a real dirty, filthy blanket, and she's got just this bottle that I suppose, unless she was used to it, would give any other baby colic or something, because it's this old, and, and, and a vodka bottles, and gin bottles, and beer cans. Let go, baby doll. Come on, let go, doll. She is such a doll, Perkins. Anyhow, I know, baby. Anyhow, uh, we um, asked him about the condition of the bed. With this, with the, we took the bedding off of this kid's bed here. Riley, what's the matter? And he said, well, looks a little bit dirty. Tell you what, um, pick up on the detectives and take the children down to juvenile hall. Put them in the dependency ward there. Meantime, we'll check the neighborhood bar and see if we can locate the mother. Take it easy, baby. You want to go for a ride? <coughs> Hey, all righty, all righty, all righty, let's go. Let's go bye-bye. How some people can have children and treat them like this, I don't know. Bundling up the little one. Please blanket. It. It's not pink, but it's warm. Uh, uh, pardon me, I must have... Never mind. Hey, careful my time. Oh, Baby under one arm. Little boy by the hand. Uh, now we'll see if we can find the mother. Hear her side of the story. If there could possibly be one. Thank you. Have fun. We were in the field for better than an hour attempting to locate the mother of the two children. We didn't have any luck, but one of our radio cars located her in a bar just a few blocks from the house. A radio call and a quick ride, and we're back here in the detective bureau. The mother is just being escorted into the office. Sergeant Perkins... Lieutenant Conlon taking over. Mother, tiny, tired, young face. 
melting into a chair. How old are you? Twenty-two. We have your two children in custody due to the fact that they have been neglected. And the neighbors in the neighborhood have been complaining. But when we went to your house today, we found your oldest boy, who is four years old, sleeping in the parkway in front of your house. Your baby, which is four months old, on a wet, soaked blanket in the living room. And there was wine bottles, beer cans, whiskey bottles, gin bottles, all over the house. Yes, sir. Uh, the neighbors have told me that they have fed your little boy in the daytime. And the neighbors also told me that they have given him clothing and underwear. Well, I did not know that they had fed him, but I have accepted clothing from him, which I'm grateful for. Will you tell me in your own words what you were going to do up here without your husband, living with a strange man and another man in the house, and your two children? I wanted to get enough money saved up so I could go home. Uh, you realize that uh, in the condition that we found your two children, that there was nothing else that we could do yes, except sir. pick them up. Yes, sir. And protect them. Can't say that I'm not glad. While we were there today, the finance company come in and repossessed his car and also the furniture that was in the house. Did you know that he owed a lot of money? No, sir, I didn't. Uh, well, you were there whenever they removed the stove and the washing machine, weren't you? I understand that was sold. Well, while you were in the house, what did you cook with? On a two-burner hot plate. And this man told you you could live in his house? Yes, sir. And you lived there for two months? Yes, sir. Where do you, uh, where do you get the money to, uh, to drink? I'm working and I don't drink. Do you remember me? Yes, sir, I do. Do you remember where I saw you last week? Yes, sir. Whereabouts was it? Where I'm working now. And what were the circumstances that time? My children were out in the car. You were drinking that night? Yes, sir, I'd had a couple of three beers. Do you remember what we told you and what the Los Angeles Police Department officers told you about the yes, children? Yes, sir. you recall? Yes, sir. About their being left alone not... and neglected? That particular night, as I recall, the windows were down. The little baby was lying in the car with no blanket over her. The little boy was in the car by himself with the, with the baby. And you were inside. You'd been drinking, and one of the fellows that was in there was pretty drunk. In fact, he was taken in, as I recall. Yes, sir. At that time, we asked you some questions, and you told us a whole bunch of different stories. Remember? Yes, sir, I do. You told me that you were married to this fellow? You told me that these were his children, and later you said they were children by another husband. In fact, when we were, when we left there, we still didn't know what the truth was. Yes, sir. The thing that I'm trying to point sure. out is the fact that, that we did run across you earlier. Yes, sir. Several weeks ago. And at that particular time, you were given a break, and you were you were told at that time that if any violation occurred in the future, that the children would be taken away from you. Well, I didn't realize that they would be alone. They weren't alone, they were with two drinks. No. How long has it been since you've had the baby outdoors? No. In the sunshine. In the sunshine. Well, I... It's been... over a week. I don't know whether you're going to get your children back or not. That's up to the courts. But I'll tell you one thing. It's a privilege you're going to have to earn. Yes, sir, that I know. What you have just heard is real. This investigation was recorded as it actually occurred. And now back to police headquarters and Chief W.N. Hildebrand. We'd like to give you the outcome of the first two cases very briefly tonight because we'd like to do something just a bit different. On the attempt suicide, the victim recovered thanks to prompt medical attention. The intoxicated cowboy was taken into custody and booked plain drunk for his own protection. Now to the case of the woman neglecting her children. 
We know a warrant was issued and the children taken into custody by the juvenile officers. Actually, this was the end of the story, not the beginning. I've asked our police recorder to bring his tape machine in here. We'd like to replay a short portion of the case involving this woman who appeared on Night Watch approximately two months ago. As you know, the juvenile officers found her two children alone and cold in a car while she was drinking in a bar. Here's what the mother said when the officers told her a petition to take the children would be presented if she neglected them again. Yeah, we're going to get a petition to take these children away from you. Understand that? Yeah. Just told her that. You mind what I told you now? Never brought attention again. You're going if to I ever do this again, I deserve it. All right, so you'd go on home. Really, I, I deserve it now. You, you want think you'd chase around? But I want the children. You, you want to chase them? around, you get somebody to take care of them kids. So you see, the mother predicted her fate two months in advance. The children have now been removed from her control and placed in a proper home. Now, the mother has to convince the court that she will provide proper care, attention, and love to her children. In other words, she's going to have to earn the privilege of taking care of her own children. I hope this will help you understand just another human problem. If so, then we have a meaning for Night Watch. Thank you, Chief Hildebrand. You have been following the -the on-the-scene reports of your police force in action... Every voice, every sound has been real. Night Watch, brought to you through the cooperation of the Police Department of Culver City, California, is produced by Sterling Tracy and Jim Hadlock, with technical advice by Sergeant Ron Perkins, and described in the field by the official police recorder, Don Reed.